friends welcome to simplifying maths today we are going to talking we are going to talk about conservation of plants and animals conservation of plants and animals means saving plants and animals in this video we are going to see how do we save plants and animals and what consequences this that earth face because of our, our activities first we look into the deforestation Deforestation means clearing of forest and using that land for other purposes. Using that land for other purposes like building houses and using that land for agriculture and using the wood of the trees for making furniture, timber and etc. Next, we'll see what consequences we face because of this deforestation. Consequences of deforestation are increase in the temperature and pollution on earth. Because of deforestation, the earth leads to the increase in temperature and pollution. Next, groundwater level gets lowered. Groundwater level gets decreased. Fertility of soil will decrease. Next, increase in natural calamities such as floods and droughts occurs. Like natural calamities gets increased because of consequences of, uh, because of deforestation. These are the consequences of deforestation. Next, we'll move into droughts. Droughts is also one of the consequences of deforestation. Droughts, in, uh, it occurs because of the increase in temperature on Earth, which disturbs the water cycle, and it makes the less rainfall and this may cause less rainfall this causes droughts next we will look into desertification desertification is nothing but the fertile land the land with nutrients humus and that type of land gets converted into deserts this is called desertification next we we'll look into the conservation of forest and life wildlife why conserving this forest and life wildlife is because we are cutting trees in the forest we are clearing the forest and where does the animals plants and the uh, tribal people over there live so for that we are may for, for that we have three protected areas called wildlife sanctuaries, national parks and biosphere reserves. First, we'll look into biosphere reserve. Biosphere reserves are the areas meant for conservation of biodiversity. So, biodiversity is plants, animals and human beings all together form biodiversity. To maintain the culture and biodiversity of that area, we are having bio-reserves. Bio Next, we will see about flora and fauna. So, flora are the plants that are found in particular area and then fauna are the animals found in particular area. So, flora and fauna. Flora means plants, fauna means animals. Next, we'll look into the endemic species. Endemic species are those species of plants and animals which are found in that particular area. Those, these type of species are found in that particular area exclusively. They, we can see naturally over there and we cannot find them anywhere else. Next, wildlife sanctuaries. As we have discussed that it is one of the protected area and these wildlife sanctuaries like forests provide them protection and suitable living conditions to wild animals. So wild animals which are habitated to the forest for that type of habitat they can live in these wildlife sanctuaries freely. Next we will look into national parks. National parks are areas reserved for wildlife sanctuaries where they can freely use the habitats and natural resources. So while wild animals, they can freely use the natural resources and animals interacting with plants and etc. Next, we look into Project Tiger. This Project Tiger is launched 
for the protection of the tigers. Project Tiger was launched by the government to protect the tigers in the country. It is launched in the April 1st, 1973. Next, we look into endangered species. Endangered species are animals which are diminishing that may face extinction. Extinction means they are getting less that we cannot find them anywhere now. So those type of species are called endangered species like the wild buffalo and then dinosaurs. These are endangered species. Next, ecosystem. An ecosystem is made of all types of plants, animals and microorganisms in an area along with non-living components such as a climate, soil, river deltas, etc. That means living organisms interacting with non-living organisms forms an ecosystem. Next, Red Data Book. So Red Data Book is the source of book which keeps a record of all endangered plants and animals. So the animals and plants which we cannot find now are kept in a record which is called Red Data Book. Next, Migration. So migration is the movement of animals from its own habitat to the other habitat for a particular time period every year due to climatic changes so for climatic changes from one place to another place the animals or birds they move from one place to another place for the climatic conditions so mostly we see migration migratory birds migrating from one place to another place next recycling of paper this is very important step which is helpful in are reducing the clearing of forest that means deforestation because we cut 17 full grown trees for getting one ton of one ton of paper so this recycling of paper can be reused for five to seven times we can reuse the paper for five to seven times we should save and reuse the used paper and recycle it by by this we can save trees we can save trees and not only trees and energy and water which we use to prepare a paper next reforestation so reforestation is restocking of the de destroyed forest by planting new trees as we are doing deforestation that means clearing of forest that is if we are always clearing the forest, the earth gets destroyed. That means we cannot find plants and animals anywhere. We, get, we may face a lot of natural calamities. So not to face these type of things, we have to reforestation. We have to do reforestation. That means planting new trees. At least we should plant as many trees as we cut. By this we can save our earth. Thanks for watching. If you like my video, please like, share and subscribe. Thank you.